Welcome to the Downtown Download virtual podcast, where we hear from our members and learn something new about downtown Madison. This broadcast is brought to you by the law firm of Carlson Black O'Callaghan and Battenberg, located in downtown Madison. Carlson Black specializes in commercial real estate, business, and tax law. Carlson Black is proud to represent many DMI members in helping to build a vibrant and inclusive downtown. Welcome to another edition of the Downtown Download. We are really excited. 2020 was an interesting year, but we think 2021 is going to be a lot better. We've got a close personal friend of DMI uh, and myself. We had a great lunch at Morris Raman just before the uh, pandemic broke out. But we've got Joseph Munich here, who is the business manager, development manager for Action Coach of Wisconsin. You haven't seen Joseph's videos on LinkedIn, you need to. They're quick, they're insightful, they're lively. He's so good on camera. So we had to bring him in here to talk about all things 2020, how we move beyond that, and what can we do to improve our lives in 2021. Joseph, how are you today, my friend? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this. I'm really, really so happy to see you, even if it's just virtually. Uh, right back at you. And by the way, I think you have one of the best backgrounds I've ever seen. And that is real, right? You can put your hand back yep. through it. It's not yep. one of those fake ones. Yep. This is where I live. I can pull a book off of the shelf if need be. It's, it's all real. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's got so much color. It's got so much pop. I love it. I love it. So let's begin. What is Action Coach? What do you guys do? What services do you offer? How do you make uh, leaders stronger? How do you make businesses better? What are you and the team at Action Coach working on and who are you? Thank you so much. Well, Action Coach is a global franchise, but Action Coach of Wisconsin is uh, the, the number one firm in, in the U.S. right now as far as all of the Action Coach franchises. We are business and executive coaches. We've got five coaches that are amazing on our team, um, award-winning coaches in the Action Coach community. And what we do is we, we work with business owners and their teams on generally three topics. Sometimes business owners are just running themselves ragged and they don't have the time to get everything they need to get done. We have proven strategies to help with that. Um, sometimes it has to do with money. You're not making as much money as you did when you were doing this before or it, that you need to make because we're going into a new 2021. And the other big thing is team. Maybe you need to start hiring a team, but you have no idea how to do that because you've been working as a solo entrepreneur for two or three years. We have the tools and the guidance and the assistance to help folks build amazing teams. And you work with businesses and not products of all sizes, correct? Yep, that is correct. From solo entrepreneurs all the way up to uh, multi-billion dollar companies. The, the system is really created so that it works for almost any size company. The billion dollar companies like TMI, because you did help us out with our focus groups, right? As I started on, I had some great advice from a good mentor of mine, Bob Sorge. Shout out to Bob Sorge from Madison Community Foundation, who said, do focus groups right in the beginning. It'll help ground your work. You guys helped out with those focus groups. So an enormous thank you to you and Susan and the team at Action Coach. Okay, 2020 was a difficult year for business, but we hope the calendar has turned over to 2021. Yeah. What are some innovations and things you're hearing about how businesses can really move forward in 2021 and try to look past what was a tough year in 2020? Well, we pivoted in a way that we started doing interviews with business owners to find out what was working, what mistakes maybe they had made that other business owners could learn from. It was for us a way to stay in touch with our database of, of folks that we regularly communicate with. But what we learned was all of these business owners suggested you've got to take action and you've really got to move on things quickly. You can't wait and think about things and see how it's going to be. Those are the companies that didn't make it. Quite frankly, it's the folks that immediately pivoted and started doing something new that have made it through this pandemic and who are poised for a reopening. 2021 is going to be all about how do you open up your store 
what protocols are going to need to be in place that have to do with vaccination or proof of vaccination? Is that even going to be an issue in your industry? So looking forward, it's really about how are you going to po position yourself to be ready for what we hope is going to be a tidal wave of business. Two questions here. What, first question is, what's a term you heard more in 2020? You're on mute or we need to pivot? <laughs> I think it would be you're on mute. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, you're, you're not on mute now. But what it, what it tells you is these businesses, I mean, you didn't even know the term you're on mute before this year. And as I can tell from, from, from the work that we do, planning is so important. And you guys do help out with strategic plans. But what happens in a year like 2020 when oftentimes that strategic plan just went right out the window? How do you guys help those businesses pivot and give them instructions and innovative thinking to make sure that their business survives now and so that they can thrive in the future? With our business planning tool, it's called Ascend. It is essentially a five-year look to the future. And part of it has to do with um, stretch goals and expectations that could be a little bit further than you really think you're going to reach. And part of it has to do with if you don't hit the goals that you expect, what is the next uh, what is the next move that you're going to need to take to pivot or to make sure that your business is poised to handle uh, less cash flow? Um, and so businesses that do have proper planning, we're, we're able to say, I may be looking at trying to hit my three-year goals actually in five years now because they would have to just slow their plan down. So really a, a proper and a, a look that is far enough forward and all encompassing really allows you to be nimble enough to, if in a, a lot of times it's recognize an opportunity for a pivot, not necessarily push one that you think is gonna work because I don't think anything really worked that we expected this year. No, and also, you know, I've heard many people say that 2020 accelerated economic trends or manager trends that we maybe already saw in the marketplace coming, right? In our industry, e-commerce. Um, one of the statistics that really blew my mind was that the old adage was about 25% of all retail spending was going to be online by 2025. Now by 2025, they're saying 33%. So that's in a massive change and a massive shift that was just accelerated by COVID. What other trends are you seeing that were accelerated by COVID that you think will just keep going more quickly and that we really all have to, to uh, accommodate moving forward? It's interesting to sort of look around myself personally. I have a big window to the world right in front of me and I see deliveries like you wouldn't believe happening. And that speaks to that whole e-commerce uh, shift that you've been talking about. But there's also businesses that might not have expected to be poised to do really well in this change. Um, there, there's a, a, a company that does 360 degree tours and they use different types of drones and, and suddenly they found themselves with more business than they could handle. They had to ramp up really, really quickly. Um, companies that supplied folks in the healthcare industry, um, People who work in construction, quite frankly, are getting booked out like crazy because people are getting sick of their homes or they realize that they need to have a study space for their kids or they need to have a play space for their kids outside so that as soon as it's warm enough, they can get them out and, and out of their hair so they can work from home. What trends are you seeing already in, we hope it's turned 2021, although I did hear a great line from somebody that they were, at the beginning of the year in 2020, they weren't seeing that the calendar had flipped over, that they thought it might have just become like December 50th or December 80th, whatever it is today. When, are you seeing trends that um, we can all learn from, uh, man, particularly in management that we, we learned in 2020 that we hope will stick? through 2021, some good things that really maybe did help employees and help managers? It's so important for teams to know what's expected of them. And a lot of the KPIs or key performance indicators for your team members may have evolved over the past six to 12 months. And it's, it's so important to revisit what the expectation is of employees, of your team members, so that they know when they're winning, they know when they're being successful. Sometimes if you tweak a commission structure or if you tweak the way a manager is listening or, or interacting with team, team members individually versus as a whole group, 
um, it becomes a lot easier to create and manage great teams. Sometimes you've got to go a little bit more granular and, and understand the communication style of an employee. Um, that, that would definitely be a trend that I've seen um, simply because everyone has been dealing with hard stuff. And people go back to their, you know, their, their toolbox of, of the ways that they keep their mindset positive. Um, and it's really important to recognize and celebrate wins with your team as well. Um, I, I think team members are really some of the most valuable resources business owners have. And it's, it's always an evolution, but to be able to say, we realize that it's been hard and we want to refocus on exactly what it is that makes you tick and, and how you feel like you're winning. Any tips or tricks on how to do that virtually? I think one of the things that's missing by people not being together is that team building and that camaraderie you get with everyone in your workplace. Any tips or tricks, one or two things that you think have really worked well to make sure that we communicate with our teams positively, that things are going well, or, or to give them the, the encouragement that they need to succeed? Absolutely. We, we always had a daily huddle at like 1.15 in the afternoon when we were in the office. When we went virtual, we created three. One in the morning, one around lunchtime, and one in the afternoon. Because not everybody could make every single one of them, but it was simply five minutes to say, this is what's going great today. This is what I'm focused on for tomorrow. This is where I need help, and this is what I'm celebrating and giving the opportunity for everyone to feel heard and an opportunity for folks to ask for assistance if they need it anywhere. We've shaved a few of those down over the months that we've gotten more used to working from home, but initially those were such important touchstones in the day for everyone who needed them. That is great advice, such good advice. But I'm gonna do something I didn't tell you about to begin with, we're gonna do the Fast and Furious Five, where I ask five rapid fire questions and you give whatever answer is on top of your head. Are you ready for this? I did not warn you, which makes this so much more rich and better. I am so ready. This is like James Lipton's The Actor Studio and I love that show so much. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Many people in my life have said, you look just like James Lipton. I, I just need that like stack of cards up to my nose uh, <laughs> questions to ask. And then yet he only asks like eight questions per show. Rest in peace. They rest in peace. But are you ready? I so, am ready, yes. I am now the James Lipton of Madison. Okay, what is your favorite management book? My favorite management, what, I'm sorry? Book, book. Oh, it would have to be Christopher Avery's The Responsibility Process. I think it's one of the most important books I've ever read. Wow, never heard of it. Okay, I'm learning already. Who is your favorite manager you've ever had in your life? Oh, when I was going to college, I worked for the Alumni Association. Um, we called folks up and asked them to renew their memberships. And our manager was a guy named John. It was a three hour shift and he spent the first hour congratulating us on what we did well the night, the night before and giving us all tips around the big table of what we could do to improve. Um, he brought the best out in all of us. Wow, that is amazing. Okay, so then what's your favorite management trait? Ooh, I would have to say a manager who you really know where you stand with. Um, I'm, I'm really a people person and um, there are people on our team that are just like me, but then there are other people who don't really care how my weekend went and really I can, I can appreciate and honor their management style and I, I tend to do better under someone who's just like, this is what you got to do to win, this is what you did, this is where you got to improve. I love it. I love it. All right. Honesty. Well, be honest with me then. What's your favorite downtown attraction? Ooh, you know, I really miss King Street. Um, I've there. That's where we last had lunch. Um, yes. The business was down Hans. there. Delicious. Francesca Hong. Yep. Mm. yep. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I miss, I miss Davino. I, I, I really miss King Street. I miss sitting out and having a beer and it's really something I'm looking forward to this spring. That bowl of miso ramen, I mean, you can order it, order it right now. You can get it delivered, keep safe, support our local businesses, order some food from Tavino, go to Ancora. There's a new uh, ice cream shop opening up on State Street in, I'm oh, sorry, on King Street in uh, April. There's your free tip of the day. All right, last question. Speaking of food, what's your favorite downtown 
food item. It is the barbecue chicken pizza from Portobello. Oh. <laughs> that sounds delicious. I think that is a perfect way to end. Thank you, Joseph Munich, the business development manager with Action Coach of Wisconsin for giving us some tips for how to get through 2021. Check out their website. They've got a ton of great ways to be able to help businesses, small and large nonprofits, small and large. We have worked them, with them personally at DMI for years and have loved their work. Now is the time to really think about your, your strategic plans and your focus groups and get your team that can help you. So Joseph, thank you so much for being with us today. Hope you have a great rest of the week and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again for joining us on the Downtown Download as well. We do appreciate our sponsors, Carlson, Black, O'Callaghan, and Battenberg for all they do for Downtown Madison. We'll see you on the next episode and we'll talk to you soon.